Okay, guys. Okay, so fact number one. I'm sick. <laughs> I feel like death. I seriously feel like death. So be happy that I am putting together this video because I feel awful. Fact number two. Because I can barely talk, you're not going to hear a lot of me in this video. You're definitely not going to see a lot of me. And fact number three. We live in a fixer-upper, so there's nothing pretty about my kitchen. So I'm probably just going to mostly show you the food in my Dutch oven. So a couple weeks ago, Tangie the caper's wife asked me um, if I would be part of the Frugal Family Food Collaboration. And I said yes, because... The theme for September is September Harvest, and I love harvest season, and so um, I decided to do a venison recipe because while hunting season in Virginia doesn't start until October, um, we still have a lot of venison left over from last year. So today I'm going to make a uh, venison stew. It is so easy, um, and the best part is you can just throw it in the Dutch oven back there and let it go. Um, and for me today, yeah, I need to let it go. <laughs> so I'm starting this early in the morning. You don't have to start it early in the morning, but it needs at least, um, you know, five or so hours to cook. It has venison, it has potatoes, carrots, any kind of vegetable you really want to throw in there. Um, whether it's from the farmer's market or your own garden. And the potatoes actually thicken up the stew as it's cooking down. Um, and then it has onions and stuff as well. So I'm gonna get started and show you how to make it. All right, so normally I, I start with venison um, backstrap. This is clearly a roast, um, but I'm out of backstrap because that's normally what happens first. We normally go through the backstrap first. The important thing about venison is you need to clean off this white part that you see, otherwise it gets really tough. What's going to happen is I'm going to clean off, I'm going to trim this white part off, and, um, and then I'm going to cut this into big chunks. Now if you were simply just making a roast and just throwing this roast in the crock pot, you would leave that, the white part on. The white part is fine when you're roasting it, slow roasting it, because it'll break down. It's not, it's not really fat, it's just what holds the muscles together. Um, venison is our number one source of meat on our homestead. Uh, we don't raise a lot of meat animals here. We do have rabbits and quail, but for the most part, venison is our go-to for meat. Alright, so I've got my chunks. They're about like this. <clears throat> you want them to stay big because they're going to break down during the cooking process. So the next part is preheat your Dutch oven and add some oil. I use avocado oil because avocado oil has a higher heat that it can be heated up to. And this bottle was probably only six or seven dollars at Costco. So you're getting an all natural better oil rather than olive oil or canola oil, but you're adding just um, avocado oil. So we're gonna use that. My pan is preheated. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my oil, probably about two tablespoons or so. I didn't salt and pepper my meat, that's okay. So while that's cooking, basically you're just getting it cooked so that it's brown on all sides. I'm going to go ahead and slice up everything else. I've got onions here. These are onions from our garden from the springtime. And they're little, but they all taste the same. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cut up. Some potatoes, carrots, all kinds of vegetables. So I did go ahead and throw the onions in there. You're going to need probably about half of a large onion <clears throat> or more, depending on what you want. Because this is a rustic stew, everything can be big. So even your other vegetables that you're cutting up, just cut them in half, they're all cooked down. So the venison is cooking down, looks about ready. You're not gonna cook it all the way through. 
You're just going to kind of cook it to get it brown. And then next, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to add beef broth. Now, I don't, we don't eat beef a lot actually, so I don't make beef broth. Um, but I do buy it. You can buy organic from Costco or just regular beef broth. If you make venison broth, which isn't necessarily easy, but possible, um, then you can use that. But I like the flavor of beef broth or beef stock. I do both. One stock, one broth. <clears throat> You're going to do two quarts of that. Put it in there along with your vegetables. And I'm also going to add a can of our home... I can hear my dogs in the background. I'm going to add a can of our homemade um, stewed tomatoes in there as well. So now that, so now that all my vegetables and tomatoes broth are in there. Now you need your seasonings. This is all fine and dandy. This is a true garden so you can throw any kind of vegetable in there that you want but when it comes down to flavor it's going to be in your seasonings. So for starters we're going to use salt. This is pink Himalayan sea salt. Let's do a few, two teaspoons of that. <clears throat> Next is pepper. You're gonna do a few teaspoons of that. I don't measure anything, but I'll try to put the stuff below. Next is my homegrown thyme. Thyme and venison go really well together. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a few pinches of that. Thyme is so easy to grow here, and it's so easy to dry. And then, bay leaves. This is your special ingredient. Bay leaves are what's going to make this. So use it liberally. I'm going to do probably three bay leaves. Bay leaves are really potent, but they're really good. So you're going to stir it all up. Now this doesn't look like much now, but in a few hours it's going to look so good. Now, whenever I make this stew, I also make yeast rolls. I'm going to put a link to that in the description because I already have a video on that. And I'm going to put um, a link up above too. Cover it and let it simmer for a few hours. All right, it's been cooking for about five and a half hours. So this was simmering, but I turned it down a little bit. What I've done is kind of gone in here and broken up the bigger pieces. So look at that. It's just, it just all falls apart. You can see that the potatoes are falling apart. The beauty of this stew is that it's very versatile. So like today I didn't have carrots, so I didn't have to put carrots in. Um, Next time I might put carrots in, or maybe I'll put green beans or peas. But I want to show this to you. You can see it, you can see that it has cooked down significantly. And that's what makes it the stewy part of it. Look how beautiful that venison is. It's just pulling apart. So we just ladle this up into bowls. You can add any kind of topping you want, or you can just eat it the way it is. You can do biscuits or rolls. Um, we do rolls, some days we'll do biscuits. And it's just so, the depth of flavor is so rich when you let it simmer all day long. You can just see the meat just falls apart when you push on it. See, oh my goodness, it's so good. So I am going to enjoy this. I am actually feeling better towards the end of this video. Um, and so I'm going to enjoy this tonight with my family, knowing that I made a good hearty meal from scratch that is frugal and easy and that is nutritious. This broth, I know that um, the broth came from two quarts of broth, 
but with it being cooked all day, it, oh my goodness, so many nutrients in there from the venison and the vegetables that were put in there. So this is really going to be healing and beneficial to the body as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope that you check out all the other frugal family meals that are on the playlist, which I'll also add to the description below. Lots of good, yummy stuff on there. So thanks for including me in this, guys. Hope you have a great day. Happy homesteading.